I figured it made the wrong assumption that, you know what, okay, we know what this is. We know what polygyny is. We know the lifestyle it is. She's already talked to and helped other ladies in polygyny to have issues. So, um, she'll, you know, she'll understand. Peace. I'm Coach Nadir, one of the co-founders of Outstanding Personal Relationships, along with Coach Fatima, his initial wife, <laughs> <laughs> and of course Co uh, Coach Nyla as a co-founder as well. And we're also authors of Let's Talk Polygyny Uncensored. Now, today we want to talk about something that we get asked quite a bit because we talk about having the difficult and challenging and tough conversations, right? And people say, you know, how do I introduce polygyny or, you know, should I talk about it first or should I do it afterwards? And of course, we discuss best practices uh, a lot from our own experiences because we didn't have the resources, but also um, just learning best practices in relationships to begin with when you want to have a sound uh, marital house. Yeah. So with that being said, today's topic is uh, polygyny. Why didn't we have the hard conversation? Right. So why didn't we, you know, again, we encourage men and women to initiate the discussion regarding polygyny, whether or not that may be something in the future or not, because there's also a, another assumption that goes, well, you should have talked about polygyny before marriage. Okay. A couple of things and we let people know, we don't want you shooting all over yourself. Should have did this, should have did that, could have did. No, it's not about should, you know, no, should have, if it didn't happen, it didn't happen. Right. All right. And that could be for a plethora of reasons. One is being able to evolve. We evolve and we grow and we change and so on as we live. That's just part of life. I'm sure you have some ideas and concepts and thoughts and beliefs right now in your life that you don't even have from five years ago, let alone 15 years ago, right? Okay, that's called evolution. <laughs> so let's not shoot all over ourselves with, oh, should have did this, should have did that. You know, just some little advice. But um, yeah, so why didn't we talk about or have that conversation about polygyny or me possibly practicing it prior to me engaging in it? All right. So what are some of your thoughts on that? Um, for me, it, it's, it could be a ton of stuff, but I'm going to narrow that thing down. For me, it was, well, number one, I didn't think it was my place or my responsibility to open up the conversation. Found out I was wrong. Um, I don't think that's the best thing to do in the position of a wife. I think if you're thinking about it or you want to talk about it, you need to talk about it. You need to communicate that to your husband because then you, you, you're extracting the assumptions that you're making prior to him even thinking about it, bringing it up, talking about it. You're removing assumption when you have the conversation. Number two is the, the most obvious is fear because, you know, <laughs> we have this, I think it's distorted. I'm going to just say that we have this, uh, as wives, oftentimes we have this distorted view that if we don't bring it up, he's not thinking about it. So I won't bring it up. <laughs> I won't give him ideas. The idea's there, queens. It's already there. Um, whether he practices polygyny or not, we can't sit here and act like our husbands have never thought of it because we don't want him to. You know, that's the gag. We go, oh, he, you know, if I don't bring it up, he won't ever think about it. That's not true. That is absolutely wrong. And um, <laughs> <laughs> it's something that hurt the relationship, I believe, because the fear drove my decision, the not thinking it was my place because I'm not the man, I'm not the husband, I'm not the one who would be practicing it, then I shouldn't bring it up. And I felt as though that was something that he'd bring to me if he wanted to. And then I had to fast forward and go, Okay, when did you let him know it was okay to bring it up, though? <laughs> you want him to bring it to you, but you've not invited him to do so. So those are just two of the main reasons that I didn't want to talk about it. I am Coach Nadir. And I'm Coach Fatima, his wife. And I am Coach Nyla. I am also his wife. We are the founders of Outstanding Personal Relationships, as well as the authors of the book, Let's, Let's Talk, Talk Polygamy, Polygamy Uncensored. Uncensored. And I'm sure you're asking yourself, 
How can you get your hands on a copy of it right now? The great part is we're about to share that with you. But first, let me tell you about why you need to at least get your hands on one or maybe more copies, depending on where you are in your polygynous journey. Some of the things that we discuss in our book is, are issues about trust, insecurities, jealousy among wives, and maybe even, possibly even, creating lasting friendships. Especially friendships amongst co-wives. And we share in this book how you can understand that it takes a village, that polygyny is not some taboo topic or something that's gonna leave women stranded alone and kids not loving each other or feel like they're left alone by their fathers or from their fathers or whatever the case may be. You will learn so much in this book. Let's talk polygamy uncensored. Indeed, we lay down the practical steps that we wish we would have had when we started our polygamy journey over 13 years ago. Well, the time is here and all you have to do, go to letstalkpolygamy.com. Order a copy, order the bundle, do whatever it is you need to do so there's no more excuses and we make it marriage great again by reminding people of polygamy, which is an ancient solution to, to a modern, modern day, day problem. problem. <laughs> Let's talk polygamy.com. Get your pre-sale order on. With that being said, make yes. sure you are growing intentionally, loving fearlessly, and connecting on a higher level every, every single day. day. <laughs> Mr. Link, Salam alaikum. Peace. Peace. Yeah, those are a couple of them. Now, again, the responsibility lies heavier, and I say it all the time, with the man anyway. I mean, it's your responsibility, period. So she doesn't have to bring it up or initiate it, though that's just a sign of maturity, regardless, in a marriage and in a friendship, because as part of that marriage, you have that friendship, you should be able to speak um, with your spouse openly and honestly about any and every topic, whether it's previous traumas or things that you heal from or things you may need healing from or even therapy or counseling, whatever there may be, mm -hmm. right? You should be able to have these conversations. Again, should. We well, want you should not love yourself. So now here's the other part. I We had conversations about polygyny beforehand. It wasn't about me necessarily mm -hmm. practicing polygyny, yeah. but we had conversations about a <laughs> book called Polygamy in Islam and why that book in the house or seeing some of my goals oh, or even yeah. hearing it on, on some of... Uh, on oh, some lyrics and stuff I did back in the day doing um, some some uh, hip hop. So they were there, but it wasn't something in you know real life like I was pursuing really at any time. But the idea was there. My <coughs> idea was mentioned on it. I had some stuff down with goals, but I noticed that that friction I had with it, that's something that was uncomfortable. So I wanted to avoid that. There was no need to start something. If I didn't have any intentions on practice, I'm like, nope. This is a sore spot for her, so no need to get into that with our history. So I didn't want any of the drama or any unnecessary stuff um, in our marriage to begin with for years. You know what I'm saying? So this is not, you know, now, of course, I've been involved in, you know, married in religion for 11, over 11 years now. Okay? But prior to that time, it wasn't like, you know what, I'm, I want to marry another wife and I want to do this. That wasn't part of my game plan. It was part of the strategy. I wanted to focus on other areas first. So... Um, for me, one of the reasons is that there was already friction to begin with. So when the time did um, come about, I figured it made the wrong assumption that, you know what? OK, we know what this is. We know what polygyny is. We know the lifestyle it is. She's already talked to and helped other ladies in polygyny that had issues. So um, she'll, you know, she'll understand. She'll get with the program. She knows I'm a good dude anyway. So it's not like I'm out here doing all this crazy, weird stuff. So I figured it'd be an easy transition. If I'm gonna deal with heat, I'll just let her know after the fact. <laughs> not best practices, <laughs> right. bad assumption. I am not demonstrating the uh, ability to handle things head on as yeah. I'm supposed to as a man. So accept the accountability for that. But those were some of the reasons I didn't just, hey, you know what? Let's go ahead and have this discussion, blah, blah, blah. And then deal with all the drama, emotions, all the fireworks, all that kind of stuff up front. Now nah, it wasn't uh, an open uh, you know, place to go ahead and do that, and then I didn't want to deal with that. So that's coming, at least from my perspective. Go ahead. I think um, also that's how we talk about personality types so often. Well, I know I do because I learned through finding out that Coach and I, there's an INTJ and I'm an ENFP. The main issue in that relationship, which is supposed to be um, a very compatible 
uh, relationship with the, between the INTJ and the ENFP. Uh, that's that's supposed to be the match made in heaven. The 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 weakness in the relationship is is that one is waiting for the other one to be vulnerable first, <laughs> and they wait and they wait and they wait and they wait just like we did. So I learned that long after the fact. Had I known that beforehand, which is why I want to put emphasis on learning what your husband or your wife's or wives personality type is and matters because then you can see why they operate the way that they do. And sometimes we think the way they operate is um, a diss toward us, shade, disrespectful. We think it's something divisive. No, that might just be the way that they know how to communicate or um, act within their day-to-day -day life. So I learned that he might be waiting on me to talk about it, <laughs> not just... I'm waiting on him. We just just two people sitting there waiting on the conversation. Now we did have the conversation, but the purpose of this video is to let you all know why we did not have a serious conversation about polygyny. We gave little, uh, you know, little hints and little jokes and little underlying, you know, truths of. Um, our experience. Our, give give an example. Felt. What does that mean? What that looks so, like? So, like the book. So, the book on the table. Why the book on the table? Book on the table because the whoop de Bye, conversation. You know, that was one of those. <laughs> or, uh, we get in and get out. Get in and get out. The older sister, that older, yeah. which is younger than us now, talking about older. She got us beat by 20 years. You know what I'm saying? Got us beat. I was like, well, if I was older, so what I'd marry her. <laughs>